Hi, I'm Jason Carr with Bayer Crop Science. Today I'd like to talk to you about planting soybeans, specifically about planting soybeans earlier than what normally growers have been comfortable with doing. So over the past several years here at our research site in Roanoke, Illinois, we've planted soybeans increasingly early and we've collected a lot of data on those soybeans and I want to share with you in this video what we've learned from that research. We've all seen research out of the U of I and other universities that recommends planting soybeans early for the best yield potential. Now often when they're talking about planting early, they're talking about planting mid to the later third of April. And they really don't recommend necessarily planting earlier than that. But in certain conditions, as we've started to find from our research at our Bayer Crop Science focus sites in central and northern Illinois, that we can plant even earlier than that, and we can still maintain the high yield potential or even increase it in some cases. So basically over the last three years at several locations across central and northern Illinois, we've planted soybeans increasingly earlier. For example, here at our site in Roanoke, we have planted on April 25th in 2018. We planted as early as April 9th in 2019. And last year we actually started planting on March 7th. The last couple of years, we basically planted every two weeks up until mid-June, so six planting dates in each of the last two years. So it's allowed us to really generate some nice data about the benefits of early planting. And we've also collected some data on the plants themselves to see what the characteristics are that lead to that increased yield potential. So one thing we've looked at is we've gone out and recorded the day at which the plants in the plot started to flower. And so last year, for instance, we planted on that March 7th planting date. And when we went out there and found how long it took to flower on that planting date, they actually took about 95 days. So about three months, they had the opportunity to grow, to put on nodes, to increase additional branches, and really set up that plant for maximum yield potential. Now, when we plant in mid-June, we only see about 30 days, about a month, that the plants grow before they start flowering. So obviously they're much smaller and you're really gonna impact yield potential in those cases. Obviously when the plants have more time to grow, they put on more nodes. So we also went out and we counted the number of nodes on the main stem of the plant, not including branches and nodes on the branches, but the number of nodes on the main stem of the plant on July 10th, each of the past two years. So you can see here that this is a very linear response and this really coincides nicely with data that we see from universities where it's a fairly linear response. So if we get the soybeans in the ground earlier, they have more time to create nodes. And basically the node creation is pretty tightly linked to the number of days it's in the ground. And so other factors can influence that, but they don't influence it as much as the amount of time that the soybeans are in the ground. And you can see here when we're talking about planting at the middle of June, we only have a few nodes, uh, only a few leaves on that plant by mid-July. Being in the ground longer leads us to create more nodes, which gives us enhanced yield potential. And so since yield is the name of the game, yield is what we're interested in, we're going to look at that here on this graph. And so to my surprise, last year when we planted on March 7th, I didn't necessarily expect a lot out of those plants. I really thought that planting date would probably fall off the graph and I thought I just wanted to see what would happen. But I was surprised to find that it actually ended up being the highest yielding planting date of the year. Now we were talking about a fairly low yield potential overall for the area. The crop really didn't take off for several months, even the, even the crop that was planted a little bit later. And so really all the planting dates kind of squashed together where we didn't have a huge uh, differential in yield from March through mid-May. And of course, it obviously dropped off when we started reaching the end of May and the beginning of June. One thing that's pretty obvious on this graph is that when we plant earlier, you can see we're gonna get a lot closer to 100% of our yield potential almost every time. Up and through mid-May, we have at least 90% of our maximum yield potential for the location and for the year. But as we get later and we start going into late May and early June, we really see a drop off. And even those mid-May plantings, you can see that there's a much wider range between the planting dates. So we might see our maximum yield potential planting early May. The conditions could be favorable. It could be just as good as those early planting dates. 
but really we also have an equal chance that it will be significantly reduced. And we really don't see that widespread in the early planting as we do as we get later into the year. This research has been very eye-opening for me and it really gives me confidence if a grower comes in early April and the conditions are perfect, the soil conditions are perfect and it's warm, it really gives me confidence to say, go ahead and plant some soybeans. You're really going to set yourself up for the highest yield potential and the risks are really not that great. Last year we had three of the planting dates were out of the ground by the time it frosted in early May and we had a pretty significant frost. It got down to about 28 overnight and stayed there for several hours. And so we really had a damaging frost and we did not see a lot of kill of the plants in that instance. So the most we saw at any planting date was a 3% reduction in population. And that really didn't impact yield to any measurable extent. Soybeans are a lot tougher than we give them credit for. Not to say that we can't get a killing frost that would force a replant, but I think it's pretty rare. The soybeans have to be at a really particular stage and it's really only at that stage when the soybeans are coming out of the ground, when the hypocotyl has not elongated, they're still bent over. And if you get a freeze on that hypocotyl, the plants will never straighten out and will never survive. But as long as a node survives a frost, you're going to have a plant. And in, in many cases, that will be a heavily branched plant, which is still going to have significant yield potential. As I mentioned, we've gone earlier and earlier over the past couple of years to see just what soybeans can withstand. And actually in 2020, at the end of the year, if you remember, November and December were beautiful. And we actually went out and planted soybeans on November 19th. And I've been keeping my eye on those through the winter. And I'm really interested to see how many of them are able to come out of the ground and see what happens to them in the 2021 season. So stay tuned for that, and also if you're interested in this topic, check out some of our other videos on this channel and learn a little bit more about some of the considerations if you're considering planting early, how to go about that, and some of the things to be mindful of. Thank you for watching.